Hi, welcome back to Old River's Farm. I got another uh, video for you guys today. Um, today, I'm gonna show you uh, a piece of equipment that I'm renting, not buying. Um, gotta get cheater pipe right here. Uh, there's a bearing on it I gotta fix. Um, so I'm planting some double crop soybeans right now. And um, of course, I'll, I don't have strip till planters. So um, if I ever uh, want to do double crop, I will literally have to till up the stubble and it hardly ever comes out good uh, because you're killing your moisture. And here in Georgia, we don't get a whole lot of moisture usually in June and July. Um, so no-till planters, and there's not a lot of people no-till planting, but no-till planter would be a lot better than, um, than actually going out there and tilling it up. So, so this is what I'm renting. It's a Hay Buster 107, 10 foot no-till drill. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm about to give it a give it a go. This will be the first time ever using a no-till drill. Um, so my neighbor, he actually, so we're, we're renting this from a guy, and my neighbor was going to use it on about 80 acres of beans, and I was going to use it on about about 80 acres. Well, about 70 acres of beans. Um, so just the other day. Um, my neighbor went and ran this drill and he said he made four passes and said forget this and unhooked now he's going into the rye stubble that i was in on halves with up there he's planting beans into that for himself um he said it was balling up real bad in the front so i said did you check all the barons and he said no well when I went to go pick it up a little while ago, there's just a bearing right there that's just screwed up, not allowing the disc to turn. So that's probably all the problem that, that it was. <clears throat> and I'm hoping that's the pro that was the only problem. Um, if it does the same thing with, with me, I'm going to make a few adjustments to it. And if it still won't do it, then, um, yeah, I won't be doing this again. But uh, this is definitely a first-time deal for me. Um it's got these nice little steps. Two pretty good size hoppers. I mean, it'll it'll hold some seed. I just put one bag of beans in here, uh, just just to give this thing a try. <clears throat> so it's got it puts out from the front and the back, which is kind of weird, but. These are uh, not as heavy duty as I thought. Uh, it's, it's fair though. So I'm about to go give it a try. Like I say, I hope that uh, well, I got to fix this bearing first, but it's also got a small seed box. I'm hoping that this thing does right because otherwise I'm not going to be able to plant all these beans just because it's going to take me so long to disc all these all this stubble up twice. I run a planter across it. <clears throat> it's just going to get too late. So um, I'm going to play with this depth a little bit too. Uh, the guy said he was, when he brought it out here, he said as long as there is no straw or heavy residue, that this should, should work really well. Like thick straw on top of the ground or residue. He said if you had like an 8 to 10 stubble height, that would be, it would be great. So i never tried one, never tried a no-till drill before. First time I've ever, honestly, even really been around one. So, about to figure out, uh, <clears throat> figure out what this thing's going to do. Very curious. Um, and his, his ground that he put it in was, um, was very sandy. 
very sandy and this hit the ground i got here is much much more of a better type dirt a little, a little bit more firm so i don't know if that's going to be better or worse but we'll find out i'm going to change this bearing real quick time's ticking if this thing's not going to work it needs to go back because um i'm not going to be able to utilize it so hopefully it does work if it does work it'd be a great experiment personally i don't think no-till soybeans will be that great in this area just because we have a, all of our soils in this area usually <clears throat> have to be ripped yearly just due to the, the nature of the soils so they can pack really bad um we're near the fall line so um yeah hard pants are pretty i mean yeah i mean even six months you can develop a hard pan here it's crazy it's just it's just our type of dirt nobody that i know does no-till soybeans around i mean nobody it's all strip till or conventional till soybeans so we'll see so just a hundred percent experiment right here um with the price of beans right now i think it's oh you know worth giving it a, a giving it a go and if it never works then i'll never do it again but uh <clears throat> you know you don't know until you try so I'll try to make some updates if I'm not too mad when I get to the field. If I can put it on, put it down and it'll run, you know, it won't ball up and all that stuff, then I'll try to make a video. So I guess if you see a, <laughs> after this, if you see <clears throat> a video of this running, then it worked. And if you didn't, if you don't, then it didn't work. <laughs> so I'm going into oat stubble. Um, that was, the straw was, was bailed. So um, or sorry, uh, wheat stubble that the straw was baled. So, um, there's really not much as far as like residue besides the eight inch, uh, wheat stubble. That's really it. Uh, and a little bit of grass popping up. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what it does. I like how you can set it so easy with this thing, with this handle. So, all right, enough talking. Let's see what it'll do. Hey Buster Model 107 No-till drill Beans. First time that I've ever done this. Um, I'm gonna guess it's going good. <laughs> uh, so this here is a field of, or was a field of oats, uh, and literally 30 minutes after I pulled the combine out of this field, we got about an inch and a half of rain. And I did not bail the straw. Um, a lot of the, it looks like a lot of the straw just kind of got beat down from the rain. So it's really not a whole heck of a lot of residue. You may run into some here and there, but it's doing good. It's doing really good. It's getting dark, so I don't really want to get out right now and show you guys, but uh, it's it's kind of hard to tell where you're going, um, but that may probably be because there's some, you know, a decent amount of grass out here. So I think what I'm gonna do, and this may be this may be bad. I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna wait to see some of them come up before I spray this grass. Well, you know what? I got to spray the grass anyway. May as well just go ahead and spray it. Um, I'm not convinced that this is gonna work. Um, and I would guess a lot of people that do no-till for the first time may say the same thing. Um, it's putting them about an inch and a half into moisture. So, I mean, 
it's got all the ingredients to get them going. I'm putting about 155,000 seeds to the acre. Uh, the seed I got was 80% germ. And I'm planting a little bit later. Honestly, I probably need to be at 170,000. But again, it's an experiment, kind of. And I don't know what the heck's going to happen. So I didn't really want to waste a bunch of seed. You know? Also, what I like about it is it's very accurate, like the, the seed, uh, the setting. My old 8300 green drill, John Deere green drill. Gosh. One side seems like it does more than the other. Always having to, you know, mess with the settings. I think it does pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed with it so far. I got about half this field done. Uh, and it's taken uh, oh man, it's slow. It's a ten footer, so I don't know. It's almost taking me an hour to plant five acres with it. Yes, I pulled the square baler into the field, made one bale, one bale, and it just started flooding. Once in a while, you may see some seed on top of the ground. But what I did is when I first came out here, first couple passes, it was it was putting a lot of them on top of the ground. And I just took a cylinder stop off of the cylinder right there. And, uh, and now, it's, now it's going perfect. Beans coming out or not, but uh, yeah, I'm not going super fast. I mean, I usually I usually like to plant it like around five miles an hour. That's just what's comfortable to me. Um, and this 46:30, that's uh, B2, and I kind of got it idled down a little bit just because I don't want to mess this guy's drill up. I'm just kind of taking it easy. So, it's hard to tell where you where you where you're going or something like this. Uh, yeah, this is a hundred percent experiment, and if it ends up failing, it's a you know not a super expensive experiment, but it's still just wasted money. So, I didn't really want to try it on a field this big, to be honest, but. I was intended on planting about 80 acres with it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be so skeptical on it. Beans are... Uh, I've seen beans do some crazy stuff. They're, they're resilient. Hopefully they can be resilient out here. Uh, I probably need to put some more potash out here. I think I put I put a little more for the oats and uh, a little a little extra. So maybe there's still a decent amount of potash out here to make a bean crop. But with the way that the prices are, just playing right through that winter of straw is crazy. With the way the prices are, you can make half as many bees and still come out the same. So, I don't know, I, I like to keep my fertility up. Uh, this field is gonna be my, my main corn field next year. And uh, these bees probably won't come off until mid-November. At the earliest. They're group seven and, or 7.3 which is actually a little early. I wanted late seven soybeans, but I couldn't get my hands on any. So this is what I got. And 
and I'm gonna plant them July 4th, and that's all that's all I'm gonna go this year uh, on beans. So, we'll see. I got some more to plant with the road planter. I know I can get a stand with a road planter. I, I don't honestly don't remember where I, when I. I don't remember a time that I've not got a stand with a row planter, especially that Case IH 900 plate planters I have. They're very good. Very good planters. All right. We'll see uh, what, what happens. I'll give updates on it. See ya.